welcome to synchronicity my guest this week is p the fairy p has been on i want to say twice i don't know at least once i know one time we did an instagram live thing impromptu and i put that up as an episode i think anyway she's great you can check her out there's links for all this stuff um that i'm going to mention and for p on the website on the podcast all the places you would want to go to click links if you can't click a link right now you're not going to follow me reading some address then just go there that's the easiest way if any of this stuff interests you we talk about a ton of stuff in this episode particularly timeline jumping and essentially being able to access states uh, relatively easily that that's an option doesn't have to be the case everyone is familiar where things are not easy seemingly but that it can be easy he's one of my favorite people to talk to um, about pretty much anything I think we agree or just temperament wise seem to be uh, in harmony and in sync for some reason she it does these human design readings and she also brings up I don't want to give away the whole fucking episode in the intro but how it can be used as a tool to understand different people's uh, kind of tendencies and how they process things which for me I know I can think fall into the trap of thinking everyone uh, thinks about things and feels about things the same way I do good episode it's cool want to thank my friends at ned again for being the coolest sponsor i've ever had uh they if, go to helloned.com <laughs> they go to helloned.com use the code sync s-y-n-c at checkout you get 15 percent off anything you order currently i've been using their lip balm their chapstick cbd what do they call it cbd lip balm whatever it is it's chapstick it doesn't you don't have to keep using it but i like to use it when my lips get chapped use it for a couple of days and I'll stop using it and forget about it. One stick has lasted me maybe, I don't know, two seasons. It's pretty great. I don't know if that's the greatest business model for selling chapstick, but they also have CBD and all these other things. Go check them out. HelloNed.com. Use the code SYNC, S-Y-N-C at checkout. You get 15% off whatever you order. I think forever, right? Is that cool if you put it in every time? I think so. So do that. They're cool. Uh, this weekend, Sunday, March 28th at 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. There is an hour of music from me and Bill Patrick. We're debuting there as Color Bar. We're going to have, like, I think at this point, I don't know, like 20 pseudonyms by the time we're done releasing all the music we're making. It's hard to pick a name sometimes. So that's what we're doing. It's under Color Bar. You can watch and listen to an hour of music. That'll also be released in some capacity. I don't know, Bandcamp, labeled, and potentially as individual songs as well. So we're going to release a lot of that music. If you want to hear an hour of music in an ambient style of things, it's a lot of arpeggios. Let's be honest. Half the thing is arpeggios and reverb, but it's pretty fucking cool. Uh, the beginning of this episode will be music from that and probably the outro, little clippies. So if you like that, go check that out. That's Sunday. And there's links to this again. I think it's thebunkerny.com slash stream but what do you remember that and sunday go to the link then create a thing go that <laughs> literally the worst call to action ever that's okay uh that's it for this episode i think oh i wanted to mention one thing because i felt like i remembered it after the episode and for some of you when p mentioned something called the void you may be like what the fuck is that i don't know what that is what is that what I would describe the void as, what she's describing, what it sounds like, is just the concept of eternity. And that can be a very, you know, fear-inducing concept or a liberating one. But that's all she's really referring to. It's not some bad or good place. It's just anything can spring from the void. This is popular in a lot of different uh, metaphysical and religious kind of philosophy. It's just there, right? Emptiness and bliss in uh, Buddhism, right? Those are the merging of those two creates the world of phenomena, which we find ourselves. It's it's everywhere. Um, that's it. All right. Nailed it. Without further ado, here is P the Fairy. What have you been up to in the past? I don't know. When's the last time we spoke? Not. It feels like maybe, I don't know, 700 timelines ago, but it wasn't right. that long ago. But I mean, I witnessed from 
social media and afar, like you're on fucking fire. Like, I think, <laughs> I think that's what I said to you when I was like, come back on the show. Like, you're really like you've stepped into this like very powerful kind of amazing creator role, not just with art, which is obviously on point, but like really helping people, which I, I obviously love to see. So like what what's been going on? Yeah, um, I've I've been timeline jumping. <laughs> I just I figured out a thing that works for me. And then I started talking about it publicly. And stuff just unfolds. I don't know. It's you timeline jump and then reality is like, oh, okay. And that's what's happening now. Sweet. So that's what's happening now. Um, and so I've just been going with that and just trusting myself more and trusting reality more, letting more love in, uh, letting more hate in. Yeah. All of it. <laughs> um, and yeah, just basking in all the glory of being alive really it's pretty fucking sweet is my main position really like when you i don't want to say when you get it but when you get to the state of being when you find yourself there where you're just kind of appreciating all of it and you recognize it not as like some uh you know delusional games so you don't have to deal with the real aspects of being alive and here but like as just like an appreciation everything kind of shifts and uh it's fucking great i i know this is where like i gave a reading earlier today and she's like you know i came to you because you're like mr positivity i'm like you know it's like a bad rap like i am overwhelmingly positive by default but that's not because everything in my life is objectively positive all of the time that's like a misapprehension that like you know when you're in this state you get that like you're fucking with it. You enjoy it. You're having a good time. But like you go through shit just like everyone else. But it's like a different perspective change. What's your timeline jumping technique that's worked for you? Yeah, um, it base it's it's utilizing acknowledging now and then being safe now, acknowledging safety now and moving into the void where nothing is. And then in the void, everything is also. Right. Um, but also like while you're in the void, all judgments of now like can't exist. And I realize that I have this ability to kind of channel the void. Like I can start talking and it just feels like, I don't know how to describe it, but like words start coming out and it starts to like question and dissolve people's current timelines while I talk. Um, and I was doing that with myself. I was sitting in the void and like letting the void talk to me and the void just kind of dissolves my current timeline has no judgments. It doesn't care what's happening in my current timeline. It's like, okay, there's nothing here. We don't, nothing, everything's here. Nothing. Time here. isn't a thing. Yeah. It's yeah. Like yeah. Just taking time out of the equation. Totally. Exactly. Um, and then in the void, that's when I can like become aware of the future self or the timeline that I'm asking for next. I don't always, I don't always have like a next timeline in mind, like consciously, like this is where I'm trying to go. Sometimes I just let my subconscious like point me in the direction and then a version of me pops up and then I take that me into myself in the yeah. void and yeah. then I am that one and I respond as that one. You did something that people won't be able to see because it's audio only, but you touched your heart when you said into myself. And I think that's like a key thing. It, this is like a felt thing. This is yeah. like a conversation yes. where you're tricking yourself into like convincing yourself you're going somewhere. It's like actually integrating in a version of yourself and then feeling it to be true and kind of accepting it, which is like a yep. key component of this stuff. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You said something the other day, which I think I discovered not too long ago, which is when you feel like you're in a very being state, powerful state, you have the ability to go back and help past versions of yourself when you know that you weren't in that state or you remember you weren't in that state. And then you think back to when you're in that state and you're like, oh yeah, I had this little voice that was like, keep going. Like you got it. And you're like, I think that was me now doing it back then. That's also like, it's a very powerful, like time machine kind of time trick, which is good. It's fucking cool. Yeah. 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 And I don't think I consciously did it, but um, no. I think it's like, it seems like it's what I would do now for myself. And so I think maybe like a part of me right now is like going back in time and talking to me um somehow and it's still it's the, the future me is also doing it and the future me is saying wild stuff this time and i'm like okay 
<laughs> what do you but, what, what downloads are you getting this time? This is this is the cutting edge here. Um, that I can change the weather, that I can completely heal my body of things at will. I can clear acne overnight if I feel like it. I die when I feel like it. My partner dies when I feel like it. Like, it's a lot of wild shit. And I'm like, I don't okay. know if I'm ready for all of this all yet. Right. So I know exactly what you're talking about. I first kind of came in touch with like those what i i wouldn't even refer to as thoughts anymore kind of just energies and just like perspectives that seem pretty true um it sent me over the deep end one time i think now what's going on is this frequency that's true i believe it's true personally i i 100 believe all that stuff and i'm I'm, I've probably spoken about it publicly about being able to choose the time of your death and the manner and the feeling and all of that. And, you know, it's fucking wacky shit. The thing is, is it feels like the pitch or the frequency of where we are collectively, whatever this is, whatever, whoever's fucking dreaming this shit up. Um, it's more accommodating. It's more kind of like holding space for those types of thoughts without being like, that's fucking insane. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. tell anyone else that that's totally crazy. Um, I've noticed probably with the weather stuff, a direct correlation sometimes that precedes the weather. Like it's not like a nice sunny day. So I feel good. Like it's the beginning part of the day. I'm like, I feel fucking amazing. It's like the best weather ever. I, I think of course that would be true. And I think it's called being in tune with kind of what's collectively and individually getting expressed outwards. Um, I love, I love that stuff. I mean, I think more people should talk about that. Um, because I think it probably does rock a fair amount of people. Like they're like, what now I'm going insane. Like, I don't want to mm -hmm. go insane now. Like this isn't the part where <laughs> I want to do that. But I mean, there are some observable phenomena that I think once you, I don't even want to say get enough experience with, but get like familiar with and get like remembering what's going on. Um, I don't know. It's cool shit. It's fun times. Mm -hmm. I, personally, it's not bad stuff. It's not like you're like, well, I think. I think every everyone's around me going to die instantly. That's those, by the way, those types of thoughts to me, rather than just labeling them as like paranoia or something like that, it's more just shadow stuff that's trying to come up. I would think that your timeline jumping technique and a lot of stuff you talk about um, with shadow stuff and kind of like using this and not denying it probably comes in handy when you're kind yeah. of surfing those waves. Yeah, yeah, I got, I go there. For sure. I was talking to um, someone, Jalisa, I don't know if you've ever saw, saw her things or stuff before. I was on a live with her saying that like, I am an extremist and I will go there <laughs> to like where like everyone dies. And I'm like in that timeline, like, oh, I don't like this timeline. Um, but then I asked myself like this time, like, what does it mean? Why are you, why is this time? Like, why is that thought coming up for you? And what are you making it mean about you? Because all the timelines pop up because of like how you relate to yourself. And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, okay. So like it, the, th the reason I'm like feeling weird about people dying is because I feel like I have no control over my reality. But then there's another par part of me who's just like, you have complete control over your reality. And those two parts are like beefing with not beefing they're looking at each other like which one of us is the right one um and so that's why that like fear pop that fear one is popping up because the, it's the opposite of the the other one i'm experiencing so i have to have both and so i have to experience like i have to like put my consciousness in both right, and choose right right key distinction there putting your consciousness somewhere i think a lot of people when they come in touch with a lot this stuff is like well i have to live it out i have to like 3d experience all of these things it's like all right i mean if you're like totally insane do that <laughs> but like you can just go there and actually like spend some time see what it's like and i i've just what's really been coming through for me recently um is our feelings are basically what we call our feelings are like the prime directive of us kind of finding what we want to be doing. Like they'll let you know, like you shouldn't, mm -hmm. shouldn't be like, Oh no, that shouldn't feel that. It's like, no, go there. You don't want to stay even a bad feeling. It's not like a, a rule that wherever you go, you stay forever. That makes no sense. But they really are this like tool that we have um in tandem with our body which i'm appreciating more and more as like a really good fucking mechanism and vehicle for like what the fuck is going on right now like why why do i feel like this what how is this what's how is this showing up um, yeah yep man, this shit is bugged out what um what else do you really kind of like see as something that like you're offering people 
in terms of like helping them shift kind of their consciousness to a way that makes them feel empowered? Because I know you're doing like a ton of stuff, but I mean, like what? Um, the the like technical offers I have are just timeline jumping and human design. Um, and I feel at first human design started igno- like annoying me at some point because I think of like the way people talk about human design was annoying me. And I couldn't like figure it out. I was just like, I don't even want to do this anymore because of the way people are talking about it. Um, but then I realized, like, um, I think I think some people in the community were taking it really seriously. And I can't handle when people take modalities like super, super, super seriously. <laughs> like, it, totally. like, I, I don't it, like I, I start to like short circuit. Um, but then I realized the reason why I use human design is because it helps me to be accepting of like different types of people because there's so many different types of people who are wired like wildly different right. and so that helps me to like hold a lot of perspective perspectives in my hands um and then i think through human design i think if more people have access to knowing the fact that like they're wired differently than others then they're not going to try to expect people to um oh, act so like them yeah. Right. So like even in my chart, there's like not a ton of activism energy. However, there are some people whose charts are like super like they're here to like change the world by being like causing friction and provoking people. Um, And like if I didn't really know about human design, I would think that they were doing quote unquote the wrong thing because I'm like, oh, no, you don't fight things. That's not that's not how you fix things. That's not how I fix things. I don't Mm -hmm. fight things to fix things. But there's some people who can cause change by causing friction. And I see it in their human design chart. Um, And so just seeing all of those different elements of humans, it's very exciting to me. And I love differentiation and I love talking to people about like this is you, like you did this to yourself, you chose this and here's your personality um, that you picked, but I'm not here to tell you to like do a certain thing with it other than whatever it is that you're trying to do. That's, right. that's my only job. <laughs> you're like giving a map basically for what people can choose to do. I also like that because I, I know this about you because I share the same tendency, like with the political activism. And at one point I tried that identity on, so I actually know what it feels like, mm-hmm. but I'm just like, I, I, this is not how I do it. Like I definitely see what's going on. I'm not like, well, no, it's not important. I'm just like, this is not how I do it. And I know in the past I've fallen into the trap of being like, no, this is how no one, sh- no one should do mm-hmm. it. Like that. Mm-hmm. And it's just mm-hmm. not, like people have different expressions of what they want to go through and honoring that and allowing people to actually go through it is like, that's probably the name of the game at this point. I mean, there's no right or wrong answer in terms of a lot of these issues, right. They're abundantly complex. The only kind of correct answer, I guess would be like, yeah, let people do what they need to do for their particular lives. Like don't yep. try to involve yourself too much with that. You also forgot yep. your podcast, which is fucking oh, yeah. awesome too. I, I got to say the idea of letting people uh, express their unpopular opinions and just reading them for people is amazing. I choose the route where I just share my own unpopular opinions and that has a different effect, but that's fucking cool. I love that. And I also know like energetically what that requires to do because you're saying out loud, whether it's yours or not, like you're still saying it out loud. Um, where the fuck did that idea come from? How did you come up with that? Um, I was talking to someone, I'm in this, um, what is it called? What is it called? I don't know. I'm in some, uh, something where <laughs> I, like a container, I really don't know how to describe it, but like this company put me in a container and they're like talking to me about like development. Um, but like i'm i'm also I, they're very like structured and i'm like this yeah. like alien who's like i choose chaos i don't want yeah, any just, rules yeah, I don't totally. want but anyway so um i was talking to them because they're very they're quite liberal the the people that are in that group and i'm like so in this little collective i'm just letting everyone know that i'm probably the one that you guys aren't going to be a big fan of um because i am not anti anything and i have a lot of unpopular opinions and when i said that one of the people who were talking they were just like i'm curious like what your unpopular opinions are about and she's like maybe you should share those on your podcast um and then i i something happened on my Instagram stories where I shared, I like just felt really liberated to like share my thoughts suddenly. And then I was just like, 
oh, I'm like, well, I feel uncancelable. So like, if you guys have things to say and you feel cancelable, tell them to me. And I don't feel like I can be canceled, so I'm not gonna get canceled. So I'll just say them. <laughs> I love that. It's like <laughs> you're taking one for the team. And you're like, listen, I find myself to be bulletproof right now. You want to go put yep. me in the front so I can take on? It's like an RPG where you just put yeah. like the tank person up front to take all the hits. It's amazing. Yeah. And I was uh, always I was either the mage or the tank whenever I used to play <laughs> RPG. <laughs> Fucking mage. I usually go mage. I like the magic stuff, I gotta say. Uh, tank, yeah, that's a sweet-ass position, though. It's critical. It's fucking amazing. Good. Leroy Jenkins. I fucking love that. Um, it's awesome because... Mine says not recording. Oh, it's not recording. Is, okay. You're fucking killing it, is the point. Um, <laughs> I'm, I love that, though, because you really do, like... Unpopular opinions are something that I think people have to kind of reconcile with because if you push it away, it actually becomes like this weird subconscious like belief thing. And that's mm -hmm. more dangerous than whatever kind of like surface opinion you want to share. I, I, yeah, I was starting to hate myself. Like keeping certain opinions to myself is literally making me start to hate myself, holding it inside. You feel weird. And I'm like, oh, I'm internalizing the hate that I'm thinking that I'm going to experience by externalizing these opinions. So I might as well externalize them and receive the hate externally and go ahead and move through that instead of trying to protect myself from receiving the hate. Um, yeah, and you usually yeah. don't get a lot of hate. And also no. uh, when you do, it's uh very funny it's like you yes. don't find it i mean i know this because i you know i have enough stuff on youtube um where a I don't get a lot of negative comments but like once in a blue moon you get something you get like a review or something and it's just like this wow i don't know what happened to this person today or why they're listening to this and but like it's funny and i think that i i know that can i'm sure you you've experienced this too it can kind of infuriate people if they're not being taken seriously when they have an opinion about what you're doing wrong or why that opinion is bad. And it's like, just like, I wish people could see that that's not really. And I find myself in this trap too. I'm not like immune from this. I'm not like some total super God living off who doesn't find themselves in judgment <laughs> of other people. But as soon as I can remember that, it's like, holy shit. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, that also like, this really does go into the timeline jumping stuff. And like, what I think I appreciate most right now from you is I love quick jumps. I love quantum leaps. I love quick cuts. I love them for a lot of reasons. I think one of the main ones is it really requires like a real knowingness of what the fuck is going on. It's like mm -hmm. you're going to get so much pushback from so many external sources, so many internal sources that when you successfully make these cuts and can express it, that shit is cool as fuck. Like that's like, I think people Whoever who needs to hear that, like, that's a very important thing. Like, there's nothing wrong with quick cuts if you want to, like, mm -hmm. hit those extremes. But I don't know. That's fucking yeah. cool. Yeah. I'm also, I'm a manifesting generator. And apparently it's our job to do that, to, like, be like, hey, you could just walk through this door. Yeah. And then you're at the same place that if you would have walked three miles, you could just open that door and the door gets you right there. Like, that, you it's, you don't have to do all that. Um, uh -huh. But I think it's because it's actually hard for me and I something that's something that I had to realize too that like the quick way isn't for everybody either right but it's just that like I can't tolerate things like being super long and complicated like I, my brain can't it's almost like when someone starts um saying um too many words to describe something that I believe should take three words my brain can't hear the rest of the words they're saying it cannot it starts it starts it sounds like nonsense to me and I'm like you move yeah yeah and so that's I'm just here for the people who are probably also like, why is this so complicated? And I'm like, I don't know. But here, there's another right? option. I feel like that, too. I think it's uh, I think everyone has that capacity, but it, it probably does. I mean, this is where something like human design or astrology or any energy reading type thing where you get like a map or a blueprint of what people are like, like or what their kind of tendencies are. That stuff's useful because I. I personally, it's almost inconceivable to me uh, that someone would recognize that they're suffering and not very quickly try to alleviate that in the most harmonious way possible. And I just personally think that that's like a good tactic most of the time, not all of the time, at least to know you have that option. That like, yeah. it's it's super important. I know it can be... Um, inaccessible, I guess, like that's something that I've learned with some of this, but I, I feel like until I see that that's not true, it's probably mm -hmm. worth continuing to talk about personally. Yeah. 
Yeah. And like stuff didn't work for me until I realized that it could be easy because it's I literally could not understand what people were saying when they were making things really complex in the spiritual community. Like I, I just like technically I could get it, but I was just like something's not right. Like it felt off um, until I realized like, oh, it's actually like easy. And you knew it was easy the entire time. And I'm like, oh, oh finally, because that's the only thing that makes sense to me. And I think that's the whole like you find your own path of least resistance. And for some people, complexity is their path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And I am learning to accept that as well. Um, Like for instance, like my partner is someone who enjoys, he allegedly enjoys challenge. Yeah. (laughs) Um, I get it. And I'm like, yeah. (laughs) Totally. I don't, I don't get it, but um, (laughs) I don't know. I think I was like a really lazy King in my last life. And I'm like, why are you guys doing this? This is so tiring. And like, he gets, get he gets annoyed because he's like, you're, he thinks I'm, I'm pretty sure he didn't said this. I think he's like, he probably thinks I'm like the laziest person ever, but I'm also like, them getting a lot of things done. Right. Allegedly. I so. think, I think that's like uh, a tough, I don't, I also feel like what you're experiencing, a lot of people who kind of like, I don't know, cheat coded it, hacked it, whatever you want to call it, have figured out this will be a more normalized state for more people over time for the main reason that I can tell most of the people who are living in this state of being or have access to it often uh, kind of imagine it for more people because they're like, why wouldn't you want this? And it doesn't take away like free will or choice or anything like that. It's just, uh, you know, you have the option. That's all. exactly. That's all. It Just- adds. It adds to free will. It gives you more options in free will. That's all it is. At least for me. And you start to appreciate the shit where you're like, "Why did I do that to myself? Like, why am I experiencing this thing that for me right now is not comfortable?" And then you usually, if you have this perspective, you go, "Oh yeah, that's why." Wow, I'm kind of an idiot sometimes, but you know what? <laughs> that's how I wanted to learn it. Cool, I get it. Um. Yeah, I liked also this idea you were talking about, like this uncancelable stuff, because I think a lot of people live in fear, not just on like a famous level, like a celebrity or someone who's out there publicly, but that they're going in some way to say the wrong thing or offend the wrong person or not. And it's like, what I try to tell people as much as possible, from what I've noticed is, the more you believe that you're saying something wrong, the more likely it is you're going to get in trouble or get canceled for it. Like that's just, it's also like a cop's thing. It's like a police thing. Like if you really Mm -hmm. feel like you're going to get in trouble, you're probably going to get in trouble. Like it's, it's usually that. I mean, you can also be blissfully unaware of stuff, but for most of the time, like don't kind of attract the thing to you. So I like that, you know, you're... (laughs) I love that you're the tank for uncancelable culture. You got to figure out how to like pitch that as a service. Like legitimately, like that's the service. Everything else is just for fun. But I literally, I love that shit. So. If you got some wild ass shit to say, I'll say it. It's so good. That's fine. It's so good. Um, Fuck, I love this. I, I really, again, I'm just appreciating kind of like where you are right now. So know that. Um, you know, when I see this stuff, I always like to let people know because it's cool. Like you really now, I'm sure you recognize this from this place. You get to help like a lot of people within your field of awareness. Like that's like a cool fucking thing. They are you, you are them, but you also have this fun kind of like inner, inner exchange thing. I get the partner loving challenge stuff. It's like a puzzle thing for them, I guess. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Puzzles are cool. I yeah, I guess maybe that's it, I suppose. <laughs> but I, I mean, I, 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 I also like his mind is able to handle, I think, um, more levels of like complexity than mine, I think. And so it's like he needs the challenge to maybe not be bored mm-hmm. um, because my brain like filters through complexity too quickly, I guess, I think I like it. Um, and so like it's like um, I. I I miss a lot of the details that like he doesn't miss. Um, and so I think that it just, it's helpful for him to like 
do all that stuff that he's doing. I know. I wonder for, for people like us too, if like the complexity also adds an element at certain times, but I like to try to reserve that for things that aren't like related to like deep trauma and emotion mm-hmm. and shadow stuff uh, that I'm going to want to make that simple. Ooh, Maybe yep. like <laughs> some like art project I'll make complex or something like I just, I feel like there is a way to kind of, uh, do that but i don't know you know you can't uh, you know this better than anyone you can't sit in judgment of how anyone else is operating Mm-mm. on this planet that's nope. the first and clearest way to like fuck your shit up um yep. yeah yep. Fuck. he's literally like they're they're wired differently than us like it's literally looking at the chart wired differently yeah. and so i'm like okay but- i get like I get it. I, so, like, can you? Uh, oh, I have a question. Human design question because you're my go-to on that. Um, can you explain the gates to me, like a dumb person's yeah. explanation of gates? Okay, thank yes. you. Yes. So the gates come from the I Ching, the the I Ching Taoism I Ching, which you know of. Um, but human design kind of spinned it a bit, and each of the gates you can correlate them with like a genetic trait. That translate to a per, translate to a personality trait, and there's 64 possibilities. Right. And each of the planets at any given moment are going through gates. There's like energies from the planets that are going through the gate, and when they go through the gate, suddenly the energy from that planet is flavored by that gate. When you were born, you breathed the energy of that gate in, or every day there's transit and transits, and you're breathing in the energy of that gate because the planet is sending down little subatomic subatomic particles that are flavored by the energy of this gate in particular um and you're experiencing that gate and so the gates each have locations in the body um so i like to think of the energy centers in human design as energy apartments that have doors and those are the gates and they can be opened or closed for energy to come into or out of um and these energy apartments are connected via pathway um and so the gates just kind of open the door or close the door to for you to be able to feel particular traits and energies in your chart or even in a building because they have charts or a dog. Right. A anything chart, can. Right. Anything. A country. Yeah. A fucking movement. Um, thank you for that. I, I, I don't understand human design well enough because it's like it's listen, you want to know something? There's your complexity in your life. I mean, human design, yeah, yeah, for example, yeah. it, is, it is a relatively <laughs> complex thing. I mean, it's not like. It's not like it you got to know from different modalities how this stuff interrelates and all of that. So there you go. How about that? That's uh, my that's my complexity. <laughs> this is the part of the podcast where I drag you into NFT discussion. I'm uh, curious. Yeah, you know, this is where we do it. I make all of my friends have uncomfortable conversations about things that directly impact their lives. Uh, <laughs> what what do you think about NFTs? What do you understand about kind of the movement or like what is going on what it means why people are upset about it why people think it's great like what as an artist i mean i'm asking mm-hmm. you this for someone yeah. that's like an awareness of this and as an artist so yeah. like what yeah. what's your take on this shit um i have one up but i i put it up before like i started reading things about it well i, I already did like read some of the environmental things about it but then they didn't make sense like what i was reading um and then it, because the, the NFTs apparently are causing a lot of like ecological damage. And that is where that's, I, my morality is quite loose with that for some reason. Like sustainability sometimes is the thing that like turns my alarms on. I really don't know why that in particular is like the thing that like makes me be like, well, I maybe, shouldn't do that. <laughs> well, perhaps it's been co-opted by something that isn't really giving the full story. I mean, just so we can talk about that real quick so you can feel a little bit more happy about your gut intuition all this whole take is is that ethereum right now is a proof of work blockchain all that means is electricity has to be used to mine ethereum so it costs a certain amount from the electrical grid you can say if you're pulling any electricity it's theoretically bad for the environment the other thing you should look at the other side is how much environmental damage is done by nothing has nothing to do with ethereum which is like a teeny small little usage of the energy grid relative to for instance christmas lights on one day of year in the united states is more than all of it for the rest of the year um or is this something that's enabling a different class or type of person to benefit potentially have a bridge 
to abundance and not be subservient to some weird kind of yeah. electrical like matrix system where we're feeding it with yes. our art, but rather like, all right, I kind of got what I need from this. This is cool as fuck. I get what this is inherently and then use it and then like see what happens. I mean, I, I, I mean, obviously I've divulged my opinion. I'm sorry, but you can yeah. keep going, keep going. You're, you're no, but yeah. So I, I, I'm like, I have no judgments for like people who participate are participating actively in the NFT world. But like, I think I want to wait until Ethereum 2.0 comes out the when it's like, where it's not. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. I want it to, I think my, my thing is like intention and I, like, I want people to pay attention to everything they're doing um, and so I like that the I, I like the idea that Ethereum point or 2.0 they like intentionally they're like oh we're going to intend to be more sustainable I like that they paid attention um, it's kind of like like fast fashion I don't really I try not to buy a lot of fast fashion clothing because there's no intentionality it's just like let's make clothes up to clothes right, and I, right. I don't like when we just do things without like um, being intentional because Solange said that do everything with intention. And so since Solange said yeah, that well, she's geez. Beyonce's sister, you have to, so anyway, um, <laughs> but I like, I, I think I, I think I, I don't like when also when things are like rushed into like that, I think I get kind of like, <gasps> but I've been like that since I was a kid where like everyone is running down the hallway. I'd be like, where are we running to? Like, I, I want everyone to slow down and ask where we're running to. <laughs> and why are you running? Yeah. And and I also don't need the money, so I I'm just like whatever. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait. It. I'll I'm wait chilling. to see what's going on. I think that's probably a prudent way of doing it. I think for a lot of people who have kind of come up from the digital art kind of ecosystem, it's it's going to be a massive shift. In the same way that like just kind of having like a UBI or people having enough money without having to necessarily go and work for it will be a big shift. I'm excited because I think there's a lot of people out there who have always kind of been on the fence of pursuing mm -hmm. a creative passion. And I think this potentially mm -hmm. can be um, a thing. I am just outright dismissive of all. I mean, I'm a, I, I, I was a big, still am like, I believe in Bitcoin. That's everything has an ecological impact. It's what yeah, is yeah. the alternate side of that equation that's going on there? Is there, um, just more destruction and like kind of inborn, like destructive capitalist tendencies in that, or is it potentially a gateway to something else? I don't know. Again, going back to making things simple, I think if you have verifiable proof that you can kind of jump timelines, create portals, go through them, pick the one where this shit is good, you know? Yeah. And I, I think that's what I'm doing too. Right? I'm like, I'm not really paying too much attention to the artists who are like villainizing the other artists. Like yeah. you guys are going to kill the ah! And I'm like, okay, I'm not really going to like look at you guys. And that's not how I feel about NFT. Um, I, I just like to pause. Like I want to slow down and I don't care if anyone else slows down, but I need to slow down on what movements I make. But I think also that like one article that all the like pro NFT people hate, <laughs> but the one that's just like, um selling one piece of nft art or whatever it's just like flying a plane across like 46 different countries right like that visual that i saw is stuck in my subconscious oh, i like it's, i mean it's in there and i'm like oh i can't that's like me flying a plane 12 million times for 300 years <laughs> You know, Whatever. I, I just don't even, this is where like my <laughs> thoughts on all of reality start to kind of like mush together. Cause I'm like, is that like, what is this? Is that really how it's going to, I also have a vague suspicion. Maybe this is delusional and maybe this is how we got in a shitty situation, but I really do feel like we're probably on the cusp of some pretty big innovations related to ecology. Um, unless people mm -hmm. collectively are just like, now nah, fuck this, uh, let's burn it to the ground and start something new. And it doesn't feel like intuitively to me, that's where we're near or where we're headed. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's always, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about most of the ecology stuff right now is that that's an unpopular opinion. You should probably yeah. be pretty, I'm pro environment. I love the environment. She's great. I also believe yeah. she's self-corrective and like we will absolutely get signals. I, I believe that too. I believe that too. But I think I have to, for me, yeah, everything is about like when I do something, what is my intention when I do that? Cause everything I do has an impact. And when I make an impact, what type of impact am I making? Um, not to say like, I'm trying to make a good impact or a bad impact. I just want to know what, what impact you're I'm doing. having. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. That's super fucking smart. Yeah. I'm kind of reckless, I think. I think that's <laughs> it's both a skill and uh, a fault, I think, at times. I I like to kind of like cut you know, go to the cut the farthest we can go for things and be like, nope, maybe that didn't work out. Or maybe that was like a great <laughs> fucking thing. Um, but I think really being intentional about things is it's probably like a, that's like a divine feminine intuitive wisdom thing. It really is. The masculine uh, is really kind of getting served its ass right now. I know that, and that <laughs> is not a state of like any gender, anything. It's just like that energy is really having to come to terms with some illogical, irrational, fucking not making sense type shit and i don't know i can't i'm here for it i like this obviously it's why i exist here now i, I assume yeah um it feels like a great time to be alive yeah i love it i'm having a fantastic time now um so that's nice and i like i was talking about um taxes with um on my podcast with someone and like paying taxes or like paying bills or whatever um and I was saying that like paying taxes and paying bills, that's a great time for you to like put your intention into a thing instead of being like, I hate my fucking taxes. I hate the government. Like, what if when you're paying your taxes, you like put your no, like your, your money is energy and you're taking your energy that's passed through you. And when it's passed through you, it's passing through all of your energies and you can like flavor them with things. And then you could decide that like the place that you live at is going to get like better and better. And it could literally change the next day when you imbue like your, your, your tax money with like intention um, or like your bill money with intention. This is um, all money. All money can be used for that, which is why I think a big turning point for me was when I accepted that I like genuinely like love and enjoy money. It's like a cool energy. It's not like I think it's the best. It's pretty stupid. It's like actually very <laughs> stupid, but like I love it because like it is still just a representation of energy being exchanged and you can do yeah. shit like that all the time. Like it's like if you're, you know, paying someone for something you're like, ah, oh, fuck, I'm going to pay for this. Or it's like, ah, I'm paying for this. I weirdly sometimes, not all the time, because I'm not totally crazy, enjoy paying bills. I'm like, oh, this is a person yeah. thing that I do do now oh, i gotta pay this all right i'll give you this for this i got it from there whatever so it's like yep. you know i know that's like a again an unpopular opinion but it's it is there is like a weird energy thing going on with this i think it's just going to be yeah. more apparent for people it is an opportunity that's fucking yeah because everything is art everything is art and so money is a medium it's a it's a gray viscous medium that doesn't mean anything and then when you put your, when you say like, when I spend this money, this is what it means. Like, let's say you're buying clothes. When I spend this money on these pair of pants, the energy that I'm trying to emit by buying these pants is that I'm a bad bitch and I'm buying these mm -hmm. because I'm a bad bitch. So when I put these on, I am emanating bad bitch energy because I spent this money with bad bitch energy. That like that's, and so it's all just molding the art that you're trying to create out of your existence and you mold it with intention i love this this is yeah. like uh it's like the potter example like it's just this spinning wheel of stuff like and also this carries through like if you're building some cool shit and it, bleh, it falls apart in your hands just rebuild it no yeah. big fucking deal <laughs> it's all good literally every day is just gray mushy clay I love it. Uh, any music you're listening to right now that you're loving? It's a new type of question. So much Playboy Cardi. Yeah. At, at 528 megahertz. Oh, no. You're... That's a fucking thing. What is this? It's amazing. Wait, it's 528 or 432? Which Both. one? They, there's there's five. There's a What's two hour one. Like five twenty eight. Five twenty eight. It's apparently me. like. <laughs> it's always. It's different. apparently like the enlightenment one, like the like the the frequency of like bliss or something like that. I'm not really sure exactly it, what it is, but does it sound the same? I don't. I don't. I haven't listened to his music not in that way. Not. Wow. <laughs> not so you have no reference. That's so. Hurts me. Was this on YouTube? That's what. That's what people are doing yep. now. Did they just put it on YouTube mm -hmm. and tune it up? This is one of the weirdest phenomena. But as someone who's made music and just watch it, like how just like pitching down or tuning up these frequencies is like that's a new thing. They're like, this is what we did to it. I'm like, and it is. It is too. It's like I'm, they're not making it up. I'm like that's a different thing. I love it. Yeah, it's fantastic. I love it. I will listen to it for hours and amazing. That's the newest thing I've been listening to. Wow. What do you think is going to happen 
in the next couple of months? Any prognostications, not necessarily for the collective exclusively, but like, oh, okay. yeah, like what do you, what themes do you kind of see yourself or just kind of people working through? What are you intentionally thinking about there? Um, oh, I did translate because <laughs> I'm hearing sounds and seeing things. <laughs> um freedom is the is a big one intention um and then i also heard screaming and i'm like what's that one what does that mean what are you saying with that oh i think that's another form of freedom maybe expression so maybe lots of art um uh it's happening lots of freedom of expression and people being themselves liberation that's what's happening there we go i think people are becoming less and less cancelable i would hope. talk shit i would hope so just like i mean i don't know like it's better to live like that because then you don't have to push this shit down and actually let it get bad and then bad yeah. things actually happen yeah. yeah and like i want people to i want to experience the truest version of people even if you're like allegedly a horrible person according to whatever people say like i want to experience the truest energy coming from you because like why else are we here in a human body like yeah i don't know i want want people to tell the truth and you can work with that too that's the truth like when you have an authentic person in front of you you know what you're dealing with rather than someone who's maybe being twisted by various opinions and thoughts and whatever the fuck else is going on. I get it. Yeah. Pete, you're the coolest. Where do people find more of you? I'll have links, all of that. But like, if you were going to point people to some places, um, my website is P the fairy.com. Um, it's P E A T H E F E A R Y.com. My podcast is cheat codes with P and my Instagram is at P the fairy. You're killing it. I love it. Uh, have an Thanks. awesome day. We'll talk soon. Let's talk. Let's talk on right. a podcast. You're the coolest. Okay. All cool. Right. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Thanks for listening. I like that I'm thanking you for listening to that. I hope I hope you liked it. You listened to the whole thing. I thank you every time. I'm going to assume you enjoyed it if you listened to the whole thing or you fell asleep. And then I'm just talking to you while you're sleeping. It's kind of weird, kind of cool. Uh, basically, you can find out more about P at all the links I mentioned. Really easy to connect with. She, I will recommend her human design readings. I got one when she just started. It was great. She records them. She's cool. Uh, check out those if you're into that. Uh, a reminder, the bunker ny.com slash stream. There'll be links Sunday, March 28th. What is it? 10 a.m.? 11 a.m.? 10 a.m. 10 a.m. I have it written down. 10 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. Figure that out for your time zone. An hour of music. It's good. You'll hear it probably. You just heard it. This is the outro. That means you already heard the music that faded in and bridged to this. So that, if you like that, that's there. You can go check that out. If you're into Patreon, you're getting, I don't know, tarot. At this point, let's be honest. What are you really getting? You're getting tarot readings, 
you're getting, I'd say maybe like five, six live streams a month. Pretty impromptu, but they're there. Most of them are recorded, if not all of them. You're getting a smoke session, eh, I'd say like 50% of the time. Every other month, it feels like not really <laughs> delivering on that, but they do happen and they're pretty cool when they do. Um, and then what else? Access to the server, the Discord server. That's a fun place. It continues to grow every day. Cryptocurrency stuff is in there. I know that can be annoying. Who cares about crypto? You're just a crypto bro. I don't know. Do you like money? Do you need money for stuff? Is that a thing in your life that like maybe you need? Check it out. Not the worst idea. That's it. That's it. Patreon.com slash synchronicity. There's links to all this shit. You know where to go at this point. You get it. All right. That's it. Till next week. Happy imagining.